All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming down. We are live from Books and Books in Coral Gables, Florida, so a note to our internet audience watching at home, if at any time during the presentation you'd like to purchase a copy of tonight's book, you can just call the number on your screen. We'll take care of that for you. We will get the book signed, and we will ship it to wherever you are in the United States free of charge. This evening, Books and Books is very happy to welcome Mr. Ernesto Ortiz and his new book, The Akashic Records, Sacred, Sacred Exploration of Your Soul's Journey Within the Wisdom of the Collective Consciousness. Mr. Ortiz is the founder and director of Journey to the Heart, a company dedicated to uplifting consciousness and the well-being of people. He is a noted artist, author, facilitator, teacher, and therapist. His intimate connection with the Akashic Records began in 1993 after being deeply touched by the material, seeing his life transformed, and assisting numerous Akashic Records classes. This book is the culmination of nearly two decades of immersion by Mr. Ortiz, personally and professionally, into the Akashic Records for individual healing, growth, and self-realization. He provides a thorough map of the energetic territory you will be exploring and the many ways you can use the Akashic Records and the guidance of the masters and teachers. Here to tell us more about it, please give a very warm welcome to Mr. Ernesto Ortiz. Thank you so much. I'm not a podium type of guy. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I am not a shoe kind of guy either. So I'm not that work here at Books and Books. I'm going to make myself real comfortable. So cool to see you all here. Wow. In a way, I think uh, so many faces of people that I know, some new faces that I don't know. It's great. Thank you so much. Wow. In a way, I think that I'm going to be preaching to, to the parishioners, you probably already know this material, but one way or another, it's so exciting to be here and to share with you this, this evening. Um, I don't know where, where to start, really, because uh, what we have been exploring, and there is more people coming, so come on in. Come on in. Hi. Some reserved seating over here in the front, apparently. The Akashic Records, what an exciting theme that we have known for so, so, so long. Uh, many of you have heard of Nostradamus. Many of you have heard of Alice Bailey. But before I get into that, I forgot one very important thing. I have a tiny little gift for each of you. And I have two beautiful ladies that are going to pass a little gift for you. One is going to go on your right hand and the other one is going on your left hand. So take one of each and just hold it. Don't eat it yet. <laughs> OK, so go ahead. Pass the chocolate. Whenever you, can we turn this down a little bit? Possible, thank you. Whenever we do spiritual work, you must eat chocolate. That's just a prerequisite, OK? <laughs> so if you ever come to my classes, Come prepare with chocolate. If not, I will have plenty. So take two. And don't take too long. Just get two chocolates. Here. Passing along. Passing along. Did you get some? How, one, one. Two. One per hand. Here, Lorraine. One, two. Chocolate going your way, Joda. One, two. Did you get? Yeah, one on each hand, please. Who needs? Ralph, you have chocolate? Who needs chocolate? Okay, who needs chocolate? Everybody has chocolate? You have chocolate? Everybody has chocolate? Yes. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I know that some of you may like dark chocolate, and this is milk chocolate, whatever. <laughs> Just take one on each hand. Got it? Yeah? We're good? Okay, so one on each hand. 
and take a nice deep long breath and drop your attention to your heart. Take another deep breath, make it gentle, make it sweet, make it down through your body and drop your attention to your heart. And imagine that you can from your heart generate the pure essence of love. Imagine a moment in your life when you felt this exquisite love and bring that into your heart. Then from your heart radiate that love down your arms, into your hands, and then put both chocolates now in, in one hand and hold them like a little clam like this. And that sensation, that feeling of love that you have in your heart, just blow right into the chocolate. I take one of the chocolates and exchange it with someone that is next to you. And the other one that you have in your hand, exchange it with somebody else. Just pass them around. So you're going to end up with two chocolates, but not your original chocolates, right? So now you can, hopefully, the person that you exchanged chocolates with had a beautiful, loving heart intention, and now you can eat your chocolates. <laughs> uh, anyway, enjoy. I, actually, I don't have any chocolate. I need a chocolate. <laughs> Maria is going to give me a chocolate. Thank you. Mm. And if later on you want to kiss, you can just ask for one. You may get a chocolate, you may get a smack on your cheek. Mm. Mm. Okay. How many of you don't know anything about the Akashic Records? A few of you. Okay. The Akashic Records is a field, and we have known about this field of energy. Akasha means primary substance or primordial substance. It's a Sanskrit word. So that means that if there was a soul factory, we all come from Akasha. That's where we just come out of. Just as much as there are star systems that give birth to stars, nebulas that birth stars, Akasha is the place from where we are all, all come from. And that is very exciting news to think about that. So when was the origin of our soul's inception? For many of us, hundreds of lifetimes ago, we just ended a cycle of 26,000 years, July, uh, December 21st, 2012, according to the Mayan calendar. So when si one cycle ended, another one began. So the Earth just passed through the narrowest point on the trajectory along the Milky Way. It's a very long trajectory of the Earth. And we are only two years into a new cycle of 26,000 years. So what that means is that if you believe that you have been here before, if you believe that you have incarnated on this planet probably hundreds of times, we have now the opportunity to create a new imprint that is going to carry us through the cycle of the next 26,000 years. Now, how many li lifetimes do you think you have lived in the past 26,000 years? Quite a few. Quite a few. Hundreds of them. So we have been everything. We have been kings and queens, beggars and prostitutes. We have been men and women, monks and everything else that you can possibly think of. What is important about this is that with new consciousness, with the awakening of a new consciousness, we are giving birth to a new possibility of the way that we are going to live our life, not only this life, but subsequent lives. So we're creating a new imprint that will carry us through the next hundreds of lifetimes. Now think about, let's say, a bookstore like this. 15, 20 years ago, whenever you went to a bookstore and you went to the uh, metaphysical section, it was probably this big. And now is huge. In addition to that, just look at the spiritual awakening that is taking place all over the world. 
is very, very unique. So there is a new dispensation taking place. And what we have known uh, at a spiritual level, what we have known about Akasha for hundreds of years, mystics, saints, sages have talked about it. Every single religion talks about the Akashic records. But we're just beginning to uncover this mystical, mysterious field. And what is unique about it, and what I love about the times that we are living in, is that most everything that we know is beginning to be proven scientifically. And that is so exciting. For some of those, for some of you, for many people, I didn't know that they were streaming this thing. So hello, whomever you are, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Too bad you're not here to have some of this chocolate. Okay. But for some, of that, some individuals that need scientific validation, we just got it about the Akashic Records. Last March, and I want to give you the correct information here. March um, 29 to 31st of 2014 in Milan, Italy, there was a new a conference. And this was the new Akasha paradigm in science and the application of, in physics, medicine and, con medicine and consciousness research. And what they discovered, what this new field has discovered, is that there is a zero point energy field that is present in everything. In quantum physics or quantum, si quantum scientists called it the quantum vacuum. And what this quantum vacuum is, is a very dense field that is almost palpable if you simply connect to this energy, which contains all of the molecules, all of the atoms of every thought, every feeling, every energy projection <laughs> that has ever taken place in the history of humankind. If you think about that, it's in a way mind-boggling to think about that. That every thought, every energy that you exchange with, a, with anyone, like the chocolate that we just exchanged, <laughs> that that is recorded somewhere in Akasha, in this dense field of consciousness. So if we're able to tap into this dense field of consciousness, we can travel to the past and we can come to the present. So the Akashic records are past and present and the possibility of unfoldment of future events. How many of you have done something in the past that you don't feel so good about today? I have. Everybody has. So, and what we do is we regret those actions and we move into the future with regrets, unfinished business with others, etc., etc. Well, what if you could rewrite your karma? What if, if you could end contracts that you have been created in this lifetime or in, pre in previous lives that, is, that are holding you back from manifesting your true and unlimited potential? How about if you can tap into a field that can give you the means to live the life of your dreams? Completely, totally. And that you have no fears, that you can even conquer the fear of dying, the fear of death. For most people, that's very frightening. How about if you can travel into this field? Imagine right now that there are hundreds of wires here in this room. And each of those wires needs to be connected with one another. And each of those wires carries a very specific and unique frequency. The unseen realms that are available to every one of us. Shamans, mystics, many uh, meditators have experienced the deep connection into these fields. But there's far more available to us. What is the percentage of the human mind that we use today as an average? Does anyone know? 10% or less, right? And there's some people out there that are using minus three. <laughs> but everyone carries within them the seed of awakening, from the tiniest of bugs to whomever is the brightest scientist in today's world. Okay? So if we could, if we could connect, I think that's my fun, I said, well, is that the one that, maybe that's the master's calling me. Let me answer that. <laughs> If we could fine tune our energy, if we could wire ourselves or, or bring an essence that is so unique that can 
take our energy from wherever it is right now to the next level of your potential. What if that seven, six, eight, eight percent, ten percent that we are using, if there was the means, something unique that gives you access to three percent more? What do you think can happen to your life? Three percent more out of, out of the unlimited potential that is inside of here is magical is beautiful. What if you can just go back and revisit everything that you have ever done that you're not so happy about, including being inside of your mother's womb in this lifetime, and change the pattern that was created at that time? Possibilities are unlimited. And the beauty about this is that now science is telling us that we can connect to this field. Science is telling us that the molecules that have ever been emanated through the field of emotion by every human being is trapped into this field of akasha. In a way, it's mind-boggling if you think about that because of the unlimited and vast potential that exists within that same field. So akasha, like I mentioned before, is past and present and the possibility of the unfoldment of future events. People that have unique and special abilities, I mentioned Edgar Cayce before, Nostradamus, Alice Bailey, uh, there are many individuals that have been able to connect to this field of Akasha, but they require, they have had very specific talents, talents that I don't have, like psychic, and quite frankly, I don't want those talents because I like it simple. And to me, the Akashic Records in the way that is presented in this book, and the way that is the, the way that I present it or teach it is through a very simple prayer. This prayer that anyone can say, you don't need any special abilities or talents. The only thing that you need is to have an open heart. And if you have an open heart, then you can enter this field. I can be the, my own witness. I am my own witness because I have experienced the dark night of my soul three times in my life. And when I mean the, the dark night of my soul, I really mean that, just be down at the very bottom of everything. With no way out, living in my car, you know, after Hurricane Andrew here in Miami, and uh, having $10 in my pocket, wondering if I'm gonna use this, those $10 to buy gasoline for my car, or to buy a hamburger or something like that. You know, very, very difficult times. And the only thing that kept me focus and had a specific way of knowing in the direction that I need to go is the simple prayer that I'm talking about. By using the Akashic crackers and receiving the guidance of the masters, I have been able to not only overcome the limitations that I had at that time of being completely flat, flat broke, broke, but to truly be living right now the life of my dreams. It is really quite an amazing, amazing thing. So the Akashic crackers are past and present, and the possibility of the unfoldment of future events. So what is really Akasha? To put it in a linear way of thinking, I think about Akasha as the Library of Congress of the Soul. Now, there are record keepers. So who keeps, you know, in this field, the, the energy that we emanate goes into what is known as our Book of Life, mentioned in the Bible, and as well as many other religions. So that book of life is a recording of the soul's progression from the inception of our soul to the present moment. So what or who is recording this information into our, into our book of life? Well, they are the recording angels. The recording angels are those little angels that are floating around all over the place, basically taking notes about everything that we do, everything that we see, everything that we, energy that we exchange with others. And then they take that information to Akasha, to this library of Congress of the Soul, where they give this information to the masters, to the record keepers, and they input this information into our book of life. Now, back in the old days, these recording angels used to be flying around with no pads and taking the information from us. In today's world, they use an iPad. <laughs> Technology, even in the angelic realm. So once that information isn't put into our book of life, then we can go back there and reread it. And at the same time, rewrite it if there is something there that we need to 
discover something that we need to write, something that we need to uh, experience, you know, anything at all that we need to to integrate into our present reality, we can do it like this. Now, the masters are, who, who are the masters? Who are these, these record keepers? Well, these are individuals that have achieved the level of true mastery in this lifetime, that they have ascended with complete karmic balance to be able to be there to assist us. But at the same time, there are souls, there are masters that have never taken embodiment. And if they have never taken embodiment, they are in that pure, pure, pure realm of consciousness that now is available to us. Every one of us can access this information. The book that I wrote is truly the book that I did not want to write. It is one of those things that just happened. This book was written in less than three months. And, uh, <laughs> and I had a dialogue for a long time with the masters when I entered my own Akashic Records. And the masters told me, write the book. And I said, no, I like the oral tradition. I'd rather just give this orally to people that come to my classes. And then they say, write the book. And I said, no, sometimes I can be a little hard headed until finally they stopped me in Bali about three years ago. And after they stopped me, I slipped and fell, thinking that I was going to go and ride a motorcycle and photograph. You see some of my photographs around. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do, that instead they stopped me by, you know, me falling, breaking my left, my left wrist, and I had no other choice but to write this book. My main concern was the prayer. The prayer is sacred. Okay, and that is what keys us in to the frequency that I was talking about earlier today. So no matter what you have done in the past, no matter uh, the, the amount of knowledge that you have accumulated in your own life, the Akashic Records are not coming to replace anything that you have done or you will do in the future, but they're coming to take you from where you are and push you up to the next level of your own personal potential. And it's so magical when that happens because you discover things about yourself and aspects of your mind that were not at the, at the front of your mind. They were not conscious. You know, we are not operating many times with consciousness. There is a, you know, talking about scientific proof, the average adult thinks anywhere from 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. Did you know that? So the question is, what are you thinking? You know? And that, that is space, the what are you thinking, the non-conscious thoughts is what we try to fill in with something else. And with the guidance of the masters, we can fill in those empty spaces or those spaces that are occupied by random thinking with another type of thought process that can, in a way, help us out to understand more who and what we are here to do. In the Akashic Records, I talk about three very specific aspects, the view, meditation, and action. When you open your Akashic Records, and the way you open your Akashic Records is with this sacred prayer. The whole formula is in, in the book. So once you access the Akashic Records and you are right there in the presence of the masters, you enter the Library of Congress of the Soul, then you are able to receive information that is very unique and specific to you and what you are asking about. It gives you the ability to separate yourself from where you are, the conscious you, to being the true witness of who you are. So the higher mind gets separated from the lower mind that is the one that is doing all the random thinking. So that higher mind now is capable of looking at your life from a neutral point of view, exercising the view. In doing this, we start gaining information about anything that we want. If you want healing, it's going to be available. If you want guidance, information, anything is right there for you. Once you have that information, if you have a specific problem, an addiction, a codependency, a repeater pattern that you dislike, that is not supporting you, helping you in your life, you can bring those questions into the Akashic Record field. And once you have that information available to you, then you can separate yourself 
and take it from the view to meditation. Meditation is the laboratory of the self. And there are many, many different types of meditations. I know that many people think, I, do, I cannot meditate, I cannot just sit there and bring my mind to be blank. Well, that is advanced meditation. It takes years to get there. But in the meantime, what we can do is access the view and take what we have right there and bring it to a meditation that gives us the ability to look with clarity at what we are trying to resolve and once that is in the, in the laboratory of the self, we can then take it from there to the next step, which is action. So the Akashic Records give us a view, the meditation, the action piece, so we can change any pattern and take any direction that we want in our lives. Do you have any questions so far? Because I really would like this to be interactive, not just me blabbing here, talking, and uh, making or ma not making any sense. But uh, maybe I, I know that I'm possibly preaching to the choir. M most of you already know what I'm talking about. But if you have any questions about the Akashic Records or anything that I have said, this is the time. But not everyone at the same time. <laughs> I don't have that information. I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, okay. Yes, it, there's been studies done with CAT scans and, and technology that show that we actually do use all of our brains, and the 10 percent is more of a myth. I, I'm not aware of that one. You know, did you know? Did you hear what she said? No. That there are studies that there has been some studies <coughs> that prove or say that. We, the humans, use about 98% of, of, of the brain instead of the 10% that we have been talking about. You know, I, 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 I don't know, so I'm just going to say, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have been exposed to classes on the study of the neurohormones, neuroconnectors, and we use a the, the cross fibers and the network of the brain is in is very active in communicating all of the time with with all of the different segments and I know that it has also demonstrated that there are areas that are available to develop but it's a, it's an it's an ongoing interactive network that is mind boggling it's, it's infinite. It's infinite. Just like the field of Akasha is infinite. It's that infinite potential that is within <coughs> us. Yeah. There is, though, in your first book and the class that I've taken with you, I keep on practicing and I advance my studies and so forth. Sometimes when I open them and I'm in them, working with them, I just don't get any answer. And um, then I just stayed there for a while. To see if something comes, but then I end up just closing off and crying. I don't know why I don't get a certain moment. We, but then I get signs sometimes. I get the signs, you know, after like, things that put up in my car or something. And get the sign. One of the things that we have to do is fine tune our senses. And the way that we receive the, the information from Akasha is in light language, which is the language of spirit. That language is sacred geometry. So a spirit gives us the information, that information descends, it gets into our eighth chakra, and then starts descending from the eighth chakra into the seventh chakra. Once it gets into the seventh chakra is when we start deciphering that information. And the way we do it is through our senses. Okay, so every one of us has one or two more senses uh, greatly developed than the others. So what we have to do is start fine-tuning all of our senses to be able to get all of the information. Then there is also patterns of interference. And patterns of interference is something that keeps you from your ability to receive the information from the masters. Patterns of interference can be uh, fragmented pieces of the soul, okay, and uh, fragmented pieces of the soul happen or take place when there is uh, trauma involved. And I can give you numerous examples, but imagine a little child that is crossing the street 
and then 15 or 20 feet away there's a big truck that is coming across and is honking and that child is just about to lose his or her life. What happens at that precise moment? That fright, <gasps> that moment of being afraid. In order to cope with that situation, a piece of the soul gets disconnected. In shamanism, it's soul hunting or soul retrieval. Okay? We can access the same information or do the same type of work through the Akashic Records, but fragmented pieces of the soul many times are there just begging you, saying, here, here I am, pay attention to me because I am ready to come back and integrate to the whole. So if we are, if you are not getting much when you are opening your Akashic Records, one of the things that, that you need to do is ask, simply ask, am I experiencing a pattern of interference, yes or no? And you will get a yes or no answer. Okay? So then you can ask, is this an internal pattern of interference or an external pattern of interference? If it's an internal pattern of interference, then you ask, is this a fragmented piece of the soul that needs to be integrated? The inner, is inner child work, and many of us have heard about inner child work. Okay, many of us have done inner child work. And you will get the guidance, you know. It's about, it's like, there is no difference getting in, accessing the Akashic Records as to making a sculpture. You have a block of marble, and little by little you start chipping away, okay. And chipping away is start removing all patterns of interference and getting more and more fine-tuned into your own energy rewiring, like you know, Marlene was saying, rewiring all these segments of the brain that are not fully connected to be able to connect them all and then get all the information that you want. <coughs> but you have to start, you know, ask, the Akashic Records are conscious work. It's not unconscious work, it's not like you have to go into deep trance or anything like that in order to receive the information. We want, in reality, we want to be mindful, we want to be uh, aware of what is happening, that's why the view meditation in action, okay? And, and at the same time, when you are in the records, if you're not getting much, start formulating questions to start chipping away so you can get to what you want to receive. Now, if anyone is experiencing, as most of us experience, patterns of limitation, fear, uh, codependencies, uh, maybe you're angry, an ang angry person or very sad all the time. What we want to do is get to the root cause of that issue. And the Akashic Records, through the art of questioning, and there is an art of questioning, because the masters are not attached to uh, giving you a yes or no answer. If you ask a yes or no answer, that is what they're going to give you. And if, they, if, you, if you need to wait another two or three lifetimes to come back again and then answer the right questions, they will wait. It's really up to you. <clears throat> so once we start learning the art of questioning and start questioning uh, everything, you know, in the way that we need to know so we can start getting back to that root cause. And when we get to root cause, then we can, it's like what I was just saying earlier, we can rewrite our karma. We cannot rewrite our karma if we cannot get to root cause. You have to understand, we have to know the origin of whatever it is that you are dealing with in order to rewrite it, otherwise how can you do it? So, so, by so asking, 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 asking questions. Well, you, you, you don't have to, the Akashic workers include the chakras, but that's just another whole yeah. topic of information. But if you, well, we if you read the Akashic record prayer, mm -hmm. if someone does pendulum dowsing, Okay. Yeah. They can douse your chakras and just make a note as to how they are. Then someone, then you open your Akashic Records and then you douse the chakras again. And within five minutes, all of your chakras are in alignment. So one of the things that the Akashic Record prayer does is to bring your chakras into alignment. So you don't have to do additional work for that. Okay. okay? Thank you. And the book, the, our, everyone's book. Uh, I want to ask you now, with the book, the Cosmic Records, I'm looking at your book, the journey, is it like every day, the, are there tools in the book just for your everyday life, for unfolding as opposed, you know, and any person can read the book and they, the prayer is there and they, they can go and use the records. How do you, what, the, what tools are there, like for just your everyday life? Not, not, I'm not saying for like, not looking 
for anything profound, like you know, changing my, you know, but just for everyday life, do you use it? Guidance and inspiration? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just right there. Uh, on my way here, my phone rang, and I didn't know who it was. I picked it up, and there was a man from Atlanta, Vince. Never met him before. He said, Ernesto, thank you so much. I said, what for? I said, you know. He said, I just ordered your book for the third time, or fourth time, I don't remember. The first time, it was for me, and the other three or four times, I had given it away. He said, your book has changed my life. And I said, how is it that it changed your life? You know, what, what, what does that mean, really? And what he said, you have, you given this book so many practical tools to apply into my everyday life that by applying those tools into my life, I have been able to change my life from the time that I read your book to the now. So the, w once you know the basics of how to, um, how to bring, what to do, you know, in your personal life to bring yourself to alignment, you know. I mean, we, we get scattered so easy. We live in this world, in this society, in this uh, culture that is bombarded with information all the time. There is a stress all over the place. And if we don't have the means to bring ourselves to, to center every day, then we can live a very stressful life. So I feel that that, you know, opening your Akashic Records takes maybe <coughs> two to three minutes. I mean, it's not a lengthy process. process you don't have to sit there cross-legged and own for, you know, <laughs> 55 minutes to at uh, the 56 minutes to have your records, boom, open. You know, it takes about three minutes. And you can open your Akashic Records and simply sit in the energy. And by <coughs> sitting in the energy, just, just receive what the Masters give you. You can, <clears throat> the Akashic Records are a field of infinite potential, really infinite potential. So in the way that you can utilize the records in your personal life is unlimited. You can use it to sit and meditate. You can uh, sit with your Akashic Records open to, uh, to enjoy a beautiful meal. You can sit with your Akashic Records open to listen to a beautiful piece of music. You can open your Akashic Records to get inf uh, uh, inspiration if you're going to start writing a new contract, you know, to start uh, doing a new uh, a scouting for film or whatever it is that, that, that you do. So I, I feel that there is uh, a lot of practical uh, information in the book that can be applied to your daily life. Yeah. You had a question. Yes. Uh, <coughs> can you give an example of an external interference? External? Those are very, very simple. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Akashic Records is, is conscious work. I want to give you an example, <coughs> example before that, so, so what I tell you makes more sense. Years ago, I created my website, journeytotheheart.com, and I was so excited that I sent an email to a bunch of my friends. Go check it out, journeytotheheart.com. I created a link, send it out. My friend John from San Francisco called me about 30 minutes later and goes, Ernesto, what in the world kind of business did you get into? I go, wow, I don't know what that means. He goes, go back to your, to your email, click on the link that you sent, and then you will find out. So I went back to the email, clicked on it, and it took me to a soft porn website. <laughs> Asking you shall receive. <laughs> so what I told him, I was so hot to send you to the heart that I sent you to the heat instead. What I did, <laughs> what I did is I changed one letter in one word, journey to the heart. Instead, I wrote journey to the heat. dot com. So I sent people to the heat instead of to the heart. When we read the prayer, it is so 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 important that you drop your attention to your heart and that you read it as something sacred so when we read the prayer and we start reading the prayer if our mind starts going to oh my god i'm too hungry right now then you're not being present your mind just went somewhere else if you are opening your akashic records and the, your neighbor's dog is barking like crazy then you are being distracted by that dog barking and you're not here being present. If you're sitting in a room 
where there's two or three or four computers around, the electromagnetic energy of the computers is creating an uh, interference. So all of these are external patterns of interference, which are very, very simple to correct. You're sitting with your, you open your Akashic Records, you're not getting anything at all. You ask, am I experiencing a pattern of interference, yes or no? Yes, internal or external, you will get external. If it's external, you close your Akashic Records and then you look around. What did, what happened, what did I do? And then any of these things can, can happen like what I just mentioned. If it's internal, then you go and do the work. I've been hearing a lot about entities. Could that external, is there such thing as a, a, an external interference from some type of entity outside yourself that's that, zoned in on you? That will be more internal than external. Okay, now entities, you're talking about entities like a, a soul piece that is, ex that is outside that is trying to get your attention? I'm not really sure what, the, what an ent entity <clears throat> is. Mm. I hear a lot about it being influenced by a, an entity. Yeah. Like some people coming back from the Amazon, you know, maybe they've done ceremony there and they, a, an entity attached themselves to them okay. and they brought yeah. them back. Well, that, 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 beco that becomes an internal pattern. Internal. That becomes an internal pattern. When there, if someone is addicted to alcohol, to nicotine, to anything like this, that is an entity that is attached to the, to the substance, okay? And that's, that entity is sucking, is taking like an energy vampire, okay? That is taking approximately 10% of your energy. And that by taking 10% of your energy, that entity keeps some of that energy for him or herself and the rest is given to the mother entity that is keeping the world addicted to that same substance. Okay, so that really becomes an internal pattern of interference and not an external pattern. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you over there in the back you had something, you had a question? Actually to answer your question of how I use the book, one of the practical ways that I can do it is um, I'm going to open it daily, um, flip to whatever page I, be, I might be drawn to, and just read whatever paragraph I'm drawn to. And very often, and there's specific tools inside there that you don't have to really access your unconscious records for it to apply in your daily life. Things like the view, having that form of awareness, or how to meditate, how to do it differently. So there are different ways to actually use the book outside of the records as well, that I actually do on a ba daily basis. And those are some ways that you can actually take home. And if you actually have the book there, you just flip it open any single time. Sometimes you get drawn to a specific chakra point. Maybe that's something I need to work on for that day. And then I can always open, then after the book, I may cost your records to look at that issue more. But that's how I, I pair it with um, the material. So yeah, that's different ways of using the material. And the book is one of them. OK, any other questions? I can just uh, relate that I have a friend, and I've known him since the 80s, and Ryan knows him too, and I can ask him any question about anything, science, people, anything, environment, he goes, oh, just a minute, and then he gives me the answer. And I, we've talked about this, how in the world could anybody know everything, because he is so brilliant about things you would never think a person could know that he could answer. And I asked him, I said, you know, really, Michael, how do you do this? And he goes, the cash of records, the library. All the answers are there. You can get whatever you want if you go there. You just have to be open and go there. And you'll get every answer because it's all right there. And I was thinking, wow, you know. <laughs> so it's yeah. like really amazing. Yeah, the, the prayer, as for the masters, teachers, and loved ones, okay? So who are these masters and who are these teachers and who are these loved ones? I already, you know, said who the masters and teachers are. Uh, well, I said who the masters are. When you go to this library of Congress of the Soul, you walk into this library and you go to the front desk. And right there you can ask the masters for basic general information and they will give you that basic general information. If you want to be specific, 
then you ask for whatever you want. Architecture is like, imagine that you can go to the Library of Congress in, the, in Washington, D.C. There's over 500 billion pieces of information, I believe. I think I'm accurate on that one. Available in that library. Okay? So you can go to the Library of Congress of the Soul and ask for anything that you want to know specifically. So if you want to know about architecture, if you want to know about Reiki healing, if you want to know about UFOs, if you want to know about anything that you want at all, okay, then the masters will bring or will call another master that has that particular expertise and that master becomes your teacher. Then you get one-on-one -on -one, uh, information from this master that now is becoming your teacher. Then the loved ones which is another part of the, of the prayer. I think that that's just a beautiful dispensation that was given to us by Spirit when they included the loved ones in the Akashic Record prayer. The loved ones are individuals that have passed on. They have died. They're no longer here. But they are trapped in the astral plane. Many times individuals that get trapped in the astral plane, they have unresolved issues with us. Either they have unresolved issues with you, or you have unresolved issues with them. And they cannot make their full transition into the light until they resolve those issues with you. How about a grandparent that was abusive to you? And now he passed on and he is, feels so guilty, that soul peace is so guilty, so, so, so full of shame, that is incapable of making a complete transition. Through the Akashic crackers, when the vibration, the affinity between your vibration and the vibration of that soul click and connect, then the masters will bring that soul from wherever he or she is being held, usually in the astral plane, to have communication with you. <laughs> and by having communication with you, come to a resolution, maybe forgiveness or whatever it takes, for you to have, for the two of you to have the balance that is required for that soul to continue moving into their path of personal evolution. So, to me, I mean, I have, I, I started my spiritual life not knowing that I was having the spiritual experiences. I was seven, eight years old, even younger than that when I start having experiences that, you know, were of metaphysical nature. So I really don't know when, when my spiritual path began, but what I do know is that once it became conscious, I have had dozens of beautiful, beautiful teachers in my life. I have many, many tools that I have learned in my entire life. Uh, I've been in the metaphysical field for a very long time as a profession. I spent many years studying, getting certifications here and there, and they're all wonderful. They have all helped me. But if I was on a plane traveling from point A to point B, and God said to me, you know what? This plane is going to crash on that island right there. You need to get rid of all of the tools that you have learned, that you have, but keep only one. What would that be? And without a doubt, and instantly for me, would be the Akashic Records. Because through the Akashic Records, I can build, rebuild, and I have rebuilt my entire life. Okay? So many times, uh, when, you know, when I, uh, I ask my, my students when they come to, to my classes, how many of you are here to grow? So I would ask you all the same question. How many of you are here to grow? Okay? And, you know, and my answer to, to that is, I'm sorry, you came to the wrong class. <laughs> <laughs> Completely, you know. Get your money back and go back home or whatever. Because everything grows. Fish grow unconsciously. Plants grow naturally. They don't have to do anything about it. They simply grow. Everything grows. It grows with the, with the collective consciousness that the divine gave as a spark of life for everything to grow. You are now what, 55 minutes older than you were when you first came into this room? So you have already grown. We all have grown, so we're 55 minutes older. But you, if you're here to learn a method, to learn a system that can forever change, you know, change your life, if you want to learn the tools 
to rebuild, to redo your entire life, and to really have the means to, uh, to, to begin to live the life of your dreams, this is the information that, uh, that you need to get. Uh, it doesn't have to be from me. I just happen to, to be here. Uh, uh, I happen to be, be the one that wrote the book, but I, I really I don't want to take, take uh, credit for it. I, I really don't. Uh, because it just so happened, it happened organically. It just, you know, in, in, in two and a half months, the whole book was written. It was, you want to call it channeled? Yeah, it was channeled. And the only thing that I did is I wrote the book in the same way that I imagine standing or sitting in a classroom with, with my students, just telling stories and just being who I am. Uh, but uh, it was just an effortless type of process. So the, the credit is really not mine. I just, I just wrote it. Uh, credit, you know, yeah. You know, these are all my images. I'll take credit for that. You know, it's me the one that put my, the eye uh, through the lens and, uh, and took the pictures. I'll take credit for that. But for the book, I think that, uh, that you can go to anyone that, uh, that, that teaches the Akashic Records. And if you feel that this is a field that is exciting to you, uh, as it is for me, uh, I just think about the unlimited potential of, of this dense field of consciousness that exists all over the world. Uh, I don't know how much time do I have. So, so, so do I have five more minutes? Sure, sure. Well, any questions, Irad? Hey, um, so before you left to Indonesia not too long ago, we yeah. were having a conversation. Yeah. And you mentioned something about doing a, an Akashic Records class here in town. Um, because some of us can't you know, travel to Guatemala and Bali with you because of financial or family or other reasons. Have you, are you planning a class? Um, no, I haven't. In the near future? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. Maybe, maybe in, in March. I don't know. I have to look at my calendar right now. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, I think there. Perhaps one last question? Still back here? What is the Akashic prayer? I'm not familiar with it. How does it go? Well, it's in the book. <laughs> uh, to, to answer your question, it's a, it's a prayer that was given to us uh, in the 1960s by a gentleman, his name uh, was Johnny Proshenska. He was a Spanish nobleman uh, from uh, Czechoslovakian descent. And he went to Mexico City, it's a very long story, it's in the book, but uh, he went to Mexico City and after having a reoccurring dream, and he walked through his dream, and then he was taken to the pyramids in Mexico City where he received the prayer. So the prayer was given originally in Mayan, and then was translated to Spanish, to English, and now to many other languages. But there is a specific formula for the prayer. So if someone just takes the prayer and reads it just like that, absolutely nothing is going to happen. Okay, there is a formula. You have to say the prayer three times and whatever. It's a simple formula, but it is a formula. And, uh, and once you do, there you are, you know. Like I said earlier, you know, t tonight, tonight the, only, the only requirements to have an open heart. You don't need specific talents, psychic abilities or anything like that. Just, you know, just the intention to be able to walk into the Hall of Records and retrieve the information for yourself. Yeah. All right, folks, I have a quick reminder for our internet audience watching at home. There's still time for you to call the number on your screen, purchase a copy of the book. We will get it signed and we will get it shipped to wherever you are in the United States free of charge. Also a reminder that all of our live streamed events are archived. So if you don't get a chance to see it live or if you'd like to watch it again, you just go to the Books and Books website and every event that we broadcast from here in the store will be saved there for you to watch at your convenience. Uh, for those of you here in the house, we have the Akashic Records for sale at the counter over there. Uh, Mr. Ortiz is going to be signing over here at the little table to my right. And this has been such an interesting evening. Please give Ernesto a hand. Thanks very much. All right. Thank, Thank you very much.
Thank you.